Hello, and welcome to the Unisys ClearPath OS 2200 release 18.0 technical update for Apex 4.0 database web pages. My name is Ryan Cavanaugh, and I am a senior engineer at Unisys, and I am excited to share with you what is new for the database web pages in release 18.0. Prior to watching this video, it is recommended to watch the Unisys ClearPath OS 2200 release 18.0 technical update for Apex 4.0 overview. The purpose of the database web pages is to provide a view of the physical structure of the database that common off-the-shelf tools like DB Visualizer and Eclipse Data Explorer fail to show and to provide access to information that is difficult to locate within the database. The database web pages were first introduced as part of Apex 3.0 and ClearPath Release 17.0, and the information displayed on the pages is now retrieved from a separate product, DB Agent, which is called from Apex. In this video, I will show the enhancements to the existing database web pages as part of the Apex 4.0 release. On the UDS Object Explorer page, the remaining RDMS objects are selectable from the object tree. These objects include columns, indexes, constraints, views, triggers, routines, and parameters. Selecting one of these objects from the object tree displays the attributes, properties, and information relating to the object. On the UDS Active Configuration page, the name of the configuration, information relating to the installation of the configuration, and information relating to the source of the installation of the configuration is displayed. Additionally, information retrieved from the database agent is cached, leading to faster page loads when the information is requested again. On the UDS Object Explorer page, Selecting a column object displays the column's information across one or two tabs in the object viewer. The first tab, General, displays general attributes, name and type of each constraint the column is a part of, default clause information, generated identity information, generated expression information, and blob column storage area information. The information is displayed when it is relevant to the column. The second tab, Statistics, is displayed when statistics have been run against the column and displays combinations and histogram statistics for each version of the column. Now I will walk through the display of a few column objects. The first is the column named Generated Identity COL. The first tab, General, is always displayed and contains one to six tables of information, four of which are displayed for this column. The first table, General, is always displayed and shows the column's general attributes when relevant to the column. This column displays the type, length, date and time when created, if nulls are allowed, item code, and if the column has 9-bit data. The second table, constraints, is displayed when the column is part of a constraint and shows the constraint's name and type. We see that this column is part of the primary key. The third table, default clause, is displayed when the default clause syntax is part of the column's definition and shows the syntax used for the default clause and the date and time the default clause was created. The fourth table, Generated Identity, is displayed if there is a generated identity in the column's definition and shows the properties of the generated identity, which include cache option, generated option, start value, increment value, minimum value, maximum value, and select behavior. The fifth table, generated expression, and the sixth table, blob storage areas, are not displayed for this column. We will look at them soon. The second tab, statistics, is displayed when statistical information is available for the column and contains two tables of information for each version of the column. The version currently displayed is selected using the drop-down menu that is above the tables. The first table, combinations, shows the name, cumulative selectivity, cumulative average length, number of rows sampled, number of total rows, and date and time the statistic was last updated. The second table, histogram, shows the bin number, range high key, date and time the statistic was last collected, number of range rows, number of equal rows, number of distinct range rows, average number of duplicate values, and number of rows sampled. The next column, Generated Expression Call displays the Generated Expression table under the General tab. This is displayed if a generated expression is part of the column's definition 
and shows the properties of the generated expression, which include cache option, generated option, and syntax. The column blob storage area col displays the blob storage areas table under the general tab. This is displayed if the column's type is blob and the column is defined to not be in record, meaning the data of the blob column has its own storage area. This table shows the storage areas used by the blob column. The column decimal col has a type of decimal, so a new field decimal digits is displayed in the general table. The column CCS name col has a type of character, so fields coded character set and correlation are displayed in the general table. The final column multi check constraint col1 is an example of a column which is part of multiple constraints. Each constraint has its own entry in the constraints table. On the UDS Object Explorer page, selecting an index object displays the index's information across one or two tabs in the object viewer. The first tab, General, displays general attributes and when the index is not partitioned, data and index storage area information and key columns. The second tab, Partitions, is visible when the index is partitioned and displays the following for each partition. General attributes, data and index storage area information, key columns, local indexes, and blob storage area information. The information is only displayed when it is relevant for the partition. Now I will walk through the display of a few index objects. The first, primary key index, is not partitioned, so only the first tab, general, is displayed. This tab contains two to four tables of information. The first table, general, is always displayed and shows the date and time the index was created or last altered, the index type, and the index subtype. The second table, key columns, is always displayed and shows the name and sort order for each column that is part of the index. The third table, index storage area, is displayed if the index is not partitioned and shows the storage area used for the index specific information of the index. The fourth table, data storage area, is displayed if the index is not partitioned and shows the storage area used for the data specific information of the index. If the index uses the same storage area to store all its information, the entry in the index storage area table and the data storage area table will be the same. The next index, generated expression index, is a global non-partitioned index which only has an index storage area so the data storage area table is not displayed. The index, index record table PK, is a partitioned index so the second tab partitions is displayed. This tab displays three to six tables of information for each partition of the index. The partition currently displayed is selected using the drop down menu that is above the tables. The first table, attributes, is always displayed and shows the state and the date and time the partition for the index was last modified. The second table, partition key columns, is always displayed and shows the name and upper bound for each column in the partition for the index. The third table, data storage area, is always displayed and shows the storage area used for the data specific information for the partition of the index. The fourth table, index storage area, is always displayed and shows the storage area used for the index specific information for the partition of the index. If the partition of the index uses the same storage area to store all its information, the entry in the data storage area table and the index storage area table are the same and all other partitions for the index have a storage area that is the same for the index storage area and data storage area. The fifth table, blob storage areas, is displayed if the partition of the index contains a blob column which is defined in the index table to store the blob column information in record and shows the storage areas used to store the blob information. The sixth table, Local indexes is displayed if the partition of the index has a subtype of local and shows the name of the local index and the storage area used by the local index. The next index, last name sort, is a partitioned index which only uses an index storage area so the data storage area table under the partitions tab is not displayed. This index also does not have any blob column or local indexes so those tables are not displayed as well. On the UDS Object Explorer page, 
Selecting a constraint object displays two or three tables in the object viewer. These tables display general attributes, columns that are part of the constraint, syntax, and foreign key or referential information. Now I will walk through the display of a few constraint objects. The first, primary key index, is a primary key constraint. The first table, general, is always displayed and shows the type and date and time the constraint was created. The second table, columns, is always displayed and shows the columns which are part of the constraint. The next constraint, multi-check constraint 1, is a check constraint so the field, syntax, is displayed in the general table. This constraint is comprised of multiple columns. Each column is listed in the columns table. The constraint, foreign key index 1, is a foreign key constraint. For this constraint, the third table, foreign key information, is displayed and shows the parent table for the constraint and the name of the constraint in the parent table that is referenced. On the UDS Object Explorer page, selecting a view object displays the view's information across two or three tabs in the object viewer. The first tab, General, displays general attributes, columns of the views, and columns from which the views columns are derived. The second tab, Referenced In, displays the programs, triggers, and routines that reference the view. The third tab, Syntax, displays the syntax of the view. Now I will walk through the display of a couple view objects. The first, Valid View, displays all three tabs. The first tab, General, is always displayed and contains three tables of information. The first table, General, is always displayed and shows the date and time the view was created or last altered and the view's data control. The second table, Columns, is always displayed and shows the following information, when relevant, for each column that is part of the view name, type, length, decimal digits, and if the column allows null values. The third table, source information, is always displayed and shows the following information for each column that is part of the view. Name, name of the source column, name of the source relation, and whether the source relation is a table or a view. The second tab, referenced in, is displayed when the view is part of a program, trigger, or routine and contains one to three tables of information. The first table, Programs, is displayed when the view is part of a program and shows the name of the programs. The second table, Triggers, is displayed when the view is part of a trigger and shows the name of the triggers. The third table, Routines, is displayed when the view is part of a routine and shows the name of the routines. The third tab, Syntax, is always displayed and shows the syntax used to define the view. The next view, View Calls, is not referenced by a program, trigger, or routine, so the reference in tab is not displayed. The view contains a column of decimal type, so the decimal digits column in the columns table contains a value. This view also has different names for its columns than the columns from which they are derived. On the UDS Object Explorer page, selecting a trigger object displays the trigger's information across three tabs in the object viewer. The first tab, General, displays general attributes. The second tab, Dependencies, displays tables, views, and routines that the trigger references. The third tab, Syntax, shows the syntax of the trigger. Now I will walk through the display of a couple trigger objects. For the first trigger, Trigger Record Routine, the first tab, General, is always displayed and shows attributes of the trigger including the date and time the trigger was created, the table targeted by the trigger, type of data manipulation done by the trigger, if the action applies to the row or statement, and when in the process the trigger is executed. The second tab, Dependencies, is always displayed and contains one to three tables of information. The first table, Tables, is always displayed and shows the tables that are part of the trigger's definition. The second table, Views, is only displayed if a view is part of the trigger's definition and shows the views that are part of that definition. The third table, Routines, is only displayed if a routine is part of the trigger's definition and shows the routines that are part of that definition. The third tab, Syntax, is always displayed and shows the syntax used to define the trigger. For the next trigger, Valid Trigger, 
Only a table is part of the trigger's definition, so only the tables table is displayed for the Dependencies tab. On the UDS Object Explorer page, selecting a Routine object displays the routine's information across two or three tabs in the Object Viewer. The first tab, General, displays general attributes and default values. The second tab, Dependencies, displays the tables, views, and other routines this routine references. The third tab, Syntax, displays the syntax of the routine. Now I will walk through the display of a few routine objects. For the first routine, Routine Record Routine, the first tab, General, is always displayed and contains two tables of information. The first table, General, is always displayed and shows attributes of the routine including type, date and time the routine was created, date and time the routine was last compiled, number of input parameters, number of output parameters, number of parameters which are both input and output parameters, and the number of result sets returned by the routine. The second table, Default Values, is always displayed and shows the default qualifier used by the routine, the default version used by the routine, and whether statistics is on or off. The second tab, Dependencies, is only displayed when the routine has a table, a view, or another routine as part of its definition and contains one to three tables of information. The first table, Tables, is only displayed when a table is part of the routine's definition and shows the name of the tables. The second table, Views, is only displayed when the view is part of the routine's definition and shows the name of the views. The third table, Routines, is only displayed when another routine is part of the routine's definition and shows the name of the routines. The third tab, Syntax, is always displayed and shows the syntax used to define the routine. The next routine, Valid Routine, only contains in parameters and only references a table and its definition. The routine, Parameter Record Routine, only contains out parameters and does not reference any tables, views, or other routines in its definition, so the Dependencies tab is not displayed. On the UDS Object Explorer page, selecting a parameter object displays general attributes in a single table in the object viewer. Now I will walk through the display of a couple parameter objects. For a parameter, a single table is displayed showing general attributes of the parameter. The first parameter, output val, is an out parameter and displays position of the parameter within the routine, sequence number, mode, data type, precision, and scale. The next parameter, input val, is an in parameter and has a character data type, so the length field is displayed. Other fields that can be displayed are data subtype, name of the character set, collation sequence for the character set, width, and number of digits in the leading field for interval data types. On the UDS Active Configuration page, a new table has been added which displays the configuration's name, version, and installation time, as well as the application group that executed the command and the level and build time of the UREP DD processor that handled the command. Now we will look at this new table. Selecting an application group displays information for the active configuration across six tabs. Under the first tab, General, the new table has been added and is displayed first. The name of the table is Source and shows the configuration's name, version, installation time, application group that executed the command to install the configuration, and the level and build time of the UREP DD processor that handled the command to install the configuration. From the time an application group is selected on one of the UDS database web pages until a new application group is selected or the browser session is closed, all information retrieved from the UDS database is cached on the user's local workstation. For each subsequent request of the same information within this window of time, an additional trip to the UDS database to retrieve the information is not required. Instead, the information from the initial request is retrieved from the cache and displayed on the web page. Thus, the time from the user request to the display of the information is decreased for subsequent requests of the same information during the defined time period. 
Thank you for watching this presentation about the new features for the database web pages of the Apex product and the Unisys ClearPath OS 2200 18.0 release. In it, we covered the enhancements made to the UDS Object Explorer page and the UDS Active Configuration page. For the UDS Object Explorer page, the remaining objects are now selectable from the object tree and upon selection, relevant information of each object is displayed. These objects are columns, indexes, constraints, views, triggers, routines, and parameters. For the UDS Active Configuration page, a new table has been added to display the source information of the configuration. Across both pages, the data retrieved from the UDS database is cached in order to decrease the time from request to display for subsequent requests of the same information. Unisys offers a comprehensive set of ClearPath Forward services to enrich the value of your ClearPath Forward applications, data, and systems. Please contact your Unisys representative for more information.